Hi everyone and welcome to a pre-HTML video about HTML syntax. What is HTML? Well, HTML or Hypertext Markup Language in its simplest form is the standard language used to create and design web pages for the internet. Now I can jump right ahead and start telling you HTML elements and how it is used to render a web page. But no, we won't be doing that in this video. This video is about HTML syntax. That is the rules or vocabulary of HTML. About HTML language and its constructs and not individual HTML elements. The video is part of yet another full stack development course playlist on Learn Awesome channel. And if you want to jump right ahead at proper HTML usage, you can skip this video and go to relevant one further in the playlist. But best to stay and understand some basic concepts as they will help you build a solid understanding. I would just like to add that if any concept I introduce sounds intimidating or scary, don't lose hope. I will explain each and everything in full detail. By end of this video, you will understand everything I introduce. So HTML language itself was created using something called Standard Generalized Markup Language or SGML, which is also known as a meta language or language about languages. SGML is a powerful meta language used to create language specifications by defining the structure and rules for markup languages. It uses document type definitions or DTDs to specify the elements, attributes, and nesting rules for a markup language. You probably never heard about SGML before and probably never will. And that's okay, as we don't need to. Unknown itself, SGML has been instrumental in the development of several important markup languages including HTML and XML, which are, needless to say, pretty well known. This description essentially means that HTML is a structured document. But what does a structured document mean? Well, a structured document is a document that is organized in a way that its content is divided into clearly defined sections or elements, each with a specific purpose and meaning. Overall structure of such documents is predefined, which helps readers, both humans and machines, to know exactly where to look for information, how to interpret each section, and what to do with the contents. The content of such document is generally organized in a hierarchical manner, often, used, often using nested elements. Element boundary is defined using something called tags. So XML and HTML are structured documents. Good. They also have another thing in common, the word markup, where XML stands for extensible markup language, while HTML is hypertext markup language. Let's focus our attention on the markup part next and understand what it means. By definition, markup in a markup language refers to annotations or codes embedded within a document to define its structure, presentation, and semantics. These annotations are not displayed to the end user but are used by software such as web browsers or XML parsers to process, interpret, and render the content appropriately. That's cool, but how are we supposed to understand this without knowing what tags look like? This entire video is turning out to be like an onion where we peel one layer only to discover a dozen other layers underneath. Hopefully, it will all come together pretty soon. So, tags in such structured documents usually appear in pairs. That is a starting tag and ending tag to give relevant meaning to the content in between and are generally written as a short name enclosed in angle brackets. As an example, the title of a document would be enclosed in starting and ending tags like this. So this is a, a real example of a tag as it is used in a HTML document, which is where this is the starting tag and this is the ending tag. So I'm sure you notice the ending tag does not match the opening or starting tag. This is the standard syntax to differentiate starting and ending tags so that you can just look and tell anywhere in a document whether a section is starting or ending via presence of a forward slash in the ending tag. So from this example, we can say that the text I am title of this document is the title of this document as it is enclosed between starting and ending tags called title. Tags typically convey a meaning, name, or description of content enclosed within. At this stage, it would be great to elaborate more on the names of XML and HTML. Extensible markup language versus hypertext markup language. Extensible means an XML document can contain tags that you define or the user defines. 
That is, you can come up with your own name for the tags, whereas in HTML, the tags can only be chosen from a fixed set, that is the hypertext. Well, the last part isn't really accurate, and as you shall see in later videos, HTML started off with a very limited scope, that is, linking HTML documents by embedding markup that contains hyperlinks or links to other documents. Later on, HTML evolved to support a wide range of functionalities beyond just hypertext, but the name stuck. So it's kind of misleading as it suggests tags can only be for hyperlinks, but still the important point being HTML tags still come from a very limited fixed set defined in HTML standard. But XML tags can be defined by its creator. Please understand why is that. The answer lies in purpose of both languages. XML is a data storage and transmission language, and hence the markup is extensible and tags convey information about the stored data, which can be anything, is general in nature, and cannot be limited. However, purpose of HTML is to display web pages, and therefore its tags are limited to ones that can be understood by browsers, etc. Let's get back to tags in HTML documents and now add two additional topics to our vocabulary related to tags, elements, and attributes. Let's start with elements. So explaining elements is easy. They are basic building blocks of a structured document. They consist of three parts. A star tag, which looks like tag name enclosed in left and right arrows like section or kitchen. Content such as I'm content of section element. And lastly, the end tag indicating end of element, same as star tag, but with a forward slash after the left arrow. Sounds familiar? The entire thing that we just discussed, explaining tags that is start and end tag with text in between in entirety is known as element or more specifically an HTML or XML element with an example given here, which is exactly same as we used before. So there are multiple categories of tags and elements in HTML, including ones given here. Note you don't have to memorize them right now as we shall go over each of these in detail in concept and coding videos. So just pause and glance them over or not, doesn't matter at this time. There are too many anyway. I'll just briefly uh, mention some of them. So the document structure tags, which define the overall structure of HTML document like HTML head and body, metadata tags, uh, which provide information about HTML document like its title, meta and link, Content sectioning tags, which organize the content into sections of web page, like header, footer, section, article, nav, you get the idea. Text content tags, which define the text content and its formatting, like paragraph tags, heading tags, span, and strong. List tags, which display lists on an HTML document or a web page, like unordered list and ordered lists. Table tags, like table, Similarly, form tags like form, embedded context tags like image, video, audio, and iframe that are generally found on any web page, scripting tags like script, and style tags like style and link. Tags have an associated property called attributes that provides additional information about the element. Attributes are always provided within the opening tag and are name value pairs. Let's understand with this example given here. So here we are defining an image element characterized by its opening tag img, which contains three attributes, source, width, and height. They are kind of adjectives for the element as it describes properties of that element. So the image we are talking about is based off a file present on disk called mypic.jpg and should be displayed on a web page with a width of 500 pixel and height of 600 pixel. A simple line of text conveys all the information to browser, which actually renders the web page. In case you are wondering what happened to the ending tag, note that in HTML syntax, the rules are much lax compared to XML. So while this line would be categorized as invalid in an XML file, this is acceptable in HTML and in any HTML element which does not need to have content. Since attributes are enough to display this image element, this element can be closed with just a forward slash followed by an angle bracket instead of the complete closing tag. All right, next concept is nesting. So nesting in HTML refers to placing one HTML element inside another HTML element. This hierarchical structure allows for the creation of complex and well-organized web pages. 
proper testing is crucial for ensuring that the HTML document is synthetically correct and renders as expected in web browsers. Let's go over some rules of nesting. So each opening tag must have a corresponding closing tag. For example, this paragraph, some text, followed by the end tag of paragraph, or image element which does not have an ending tag, but it is being closed properly using this forward slash and angle brackets. Next is that nested tags must be closed in reverse order of their opening. Let's understand with an example. So let's say you open a div element and don't worry if you don't understand what a div element is, just focus on the tags and elements at the moment. We'll explain later. So a div element is starting here and is containing or nesting a paragraph element. So the paragraph element uh, appears next with its contents and then the paragraph element must close before the div element is closed. So taking a counter example, a div element starts here with a starting tag followed by paragraph and its contents, but then we close the div element first and paragraph later, which is a glaring bad example for nesting because the div element closed before the paragraph element was allowed to close. So the paragraph element isn't exactly well formed as you can see. A starting element cannot have its ending tag within its child element. So that is why this rule exists. Nesting tag must be closed in reverse order of their opening. The same can be reworded in this rule, avoid overlapping tags. That is, tags should not overlap in a way that breaks nesting structure. So this is just another way of saying the same rule. The child element must close in entirety inside the parent element. So I also came up with a one-liner rule of nesting since, since the rule we discussed were overlapping quite a bit. So if star tag is in content of another element, means the parent element, the end tag is in the content of the same element, which means if you start an element as a child of a parent element, then the child should be fully contained within the parent. I hope that is clear by now. All right, let's go over some, some other key vocabulary or concepts regarding HTML documents, which would come in handy later on, starting with entities or escape characters. So in HTML, entities are special characters that are used to represent reserved characters correctly in the browser. So as an example, angle brackets are part of HTML syntax since they are used to define a tag and hence cannot be used in a text content as is. So there are special alternatives provided in HTML to use them in text. As an example, if you want to use, let's say, a left angle bracket in text, you would use ampersand LT semicolon instead. I know it sounds weird using four characters to use in place of one, but that is the way provided in HTML. I didn't write the rules. So here are some basic entities or escape characters provided in HTML. So as we mentioned, ampersand LT semicolon represents left arrow or less than sign. Ampersand GT semicolon represents the greater than sign. Ampersand AMP semicolon represent ampersand or this character. Ampersand APOS represents the semicolon and ampersand QUOT semicolon represents double quote. Our next concept is C data. C data is used to type HTML within an HTML or show HTML on a web page. So say your web page is a tutorial about HTML and you want to show an example of an HTML element. So you simply can't do it directly as it directly conflicts with the HTML syntax and the browser would try to display the element as intended. Like for example, if you are uh, trying to show an example of an image element, the browser would try to show the image instead of your example. So you can argue that I can try and use entities but trying to use entities for a lot of examples would drive you mad pretty soon. So C data is the rescue board that arrives when approaching that state. This, the contents within C data section can be normal HTML without using any entities, just plain old HTML and browser would interpret them as text and not as HTML for a web browser display. The syntax is a bit different, so an example would clarify. So here is an example of C data where these are the contents of the C data section 
and uh, you can use all the reserved words and pretty much any XML markup with impunity. And the browser would totally respect that and show them as is. Next concept is comments. Sometimes you want to leave a reference to yourself in HTML document, like a note about a particular element, which is for developer's eyes only and not to be shown in the browser. For that, you use comments. Enclosed within the angle bracket exclamation mark and two dashes and two dashes angle bracket, comments are completely ignored by browsers while reading HTML. So you can write whatever you want here, taking example of a paragraph element containing a comment as well as the paragraph text, where only this part would be shown. Okay, our final topic is processing instructions. So processing instructions in HTML, such as doc type, provide important metadata about the document and guide the browser on how to render the content. The doc type declaration is the most common processing instruction and is essential for ensuring that the document is rendered correctly according to their specified HTML version. The declaration should or must be the very first line in HTML document before the HTML tag. We'll explain this later in HTML introduction, so for now, this is enough to know. All right, well, I think this is pretty exhausting for an introductory session of HTML syntax. This is why I kept syntax instructions separate from proper HTML introduction, which would be covered in a later video. Hopefully you have some intuition about how HTML documents are structured and later videos would further refine the concepts covered here and solidify your understanding. If you liked, please don't forget to like and share and consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.